So when we plot the border plots, each of the terms are plotted one by one. Well, you don't have to plot them. Uh, I just gave them how to plot. The gain has a constant magnitude and zero phase if you have a gain. If you have an integrator or a differentiator, uh, you have at frequency of one, you are at zero dB, and then your slope depends on uh, whether you are uh, using a differentiator or an integrator. For example, for an integrator, the slope will be, uh, well, minus one, or if you are using dBs, uh, minus 20 dBs per decade, okay? And for the phase, it will be uh, a constant, it won't be zero, but it will be a constant. Okay, I showed all of these. And then for a first order system in the numerator, uh, we look at the asymptotes and the asymptotes meet at the, the so-called break point, omega t equals one or omega equals one over t. This is why we use the time constant format to find the break point. And then you start at zero dB and you go up to infinity actually for infinite uh, frequency. And the slope is again 20 dB going upwards, okay. Uh, for the phase, it starts at zero and goes to 90 dB. Now, uh, another important thing is when you have a first order term divided into in the numerator, denominator, you started again at zero dBs and then go down this time towards minus infinity, if you like. And the phase angle starts at zero, goes to minus 90. Okay, and the second order system is written in terms of, uh, well, omega divided by, you divide everything by omega n squared. In that case, uh, it starts at zero dB for low frequencies and goes to, uh, again, negative, well, goes to zero eventually for uh, high frequencies with a slope of minus 40 dB, by the way, per decade. And uh, these are the asymptotes. It's one is zero, the other is an asymptote that minus 40 dB per decade. And then the, the, the tip point, the maximum point is when one over two, when omega is omega n, T of J omega is one over two zeta. And then the phase is like this. And there is a time delay, which I won't spend much time. So this is where we had stopped the last time, as you might remember. But then uh, I try to give an example, yes. Hocam, I'm so sorry to disrupt you, but um, may you show the um, calculation we made when we separating S plus two times S plus C, we write one over two and one over three from uh, at the beginning of the equations. Uh, you mean this, uh, sorry, let's see. Uh, COTS was S plus one. You, are, mm -hmm. this, you mean this, right? Yes, yes, Sir uh, We said one over two times two s plus one, but isn't it needs to be plus four? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, like we wrote two s plus one times one over two, but in order to get the exact thing in the beginning, we don't we need to write plus four because we had s plus two. Mm, you are right. Actually, maybe I made a mistake there. Okay. Uh, actually, what what I should do is the following. I'm sorry. You are right. Actually, yeah. I should have one over two s plus one times. This is what we should have. Sorry. Yes. No, uh, okay. Okay. This is right. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Okay. Then we have yeah three times yeah yeah. Yeah, just correct that one. One over three s plus one. Okay, so this will be six s plus one. Uh, 
over two plus one plus over two plus one. This is the correct version. Okay, thank you. Or jump isn't it one over six? Uh, six, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it seems I made a lot of mistakes that time. So the game K is this one, this is K, and these are the time constants. One, uh, here you have T equals one, here you have T equals, let's say, uh, one over two, here T equals one over two. Okay. So uh, let's go with and continue with an example here. I will. This becomes smaller and smaller actually. Let's start to, um, let's use example. And the example is C of S. I'll try to draw the border plot of the whole thing 2000 times S plus 0 0.5. So, uh, we will try to plot the border plot of this thing uh, by looking at the individual terms. We first have to convert it into uh, the standard form for, you know, plotting the border plots. And this will be G of S is always equal to, uh, well, 2000 again times. Now we will have 0 0.5 will go out S over 0 0.5 plus one divided by S stays here. Um, ten goes out S over 10 plus one. Uh, 50 goes out S over 50 plus one. Okay. Which is uh, what five hundred and zero point five two, right? So it is. So this is five hundred divided two thousand divided by five hundred is four. Four times zero point five is two. Two times s over zero point five plus one divided by S times S over 10 plus one, S over 50 plus one. Uh, so G of J omega, when you replace S by J omega is two times J omega over 0 0.5 plus one, Okay. So uh, we will look at the individual terms now. Two uh, has a gain of two. Well, so we have the terms. These are the terms. Two, one over J omega. Uh, J omega over 0 0.5 plus 1. Not J omega. J omega over 10 plus 1. And 50 plus 1. Okay. So this one, uh, when you plot it, it's going to be, in terms of decibels, uh, the gain will be uh, 20 log 2, whatever it is, okay? And this one is going to be 
Uh, I don't have to plot this first one. Well, let's do number down one, two, three, four, and five. For the first one, we have this. Uh, well, if we look to, let's say, in terms of the magnitude, let's say. For the second one, uh, when omega equals one, you have uh, the gain is going to be equal to one, uh, which is zero dBs, right? Zero dBs. Uh, and the slope is going to be like this. Uh, not a bit slowing. Something like the slope has, has a, it has a slope of minus one. Anyway, it passes from this point. So we will combine these. The third one, third one is uh, J omega divided by 0 0.5. It has a break point at 0 0.5. It goes like this. Um, it's zero dBs here. At 0 0.5, it has a break point so that its its magnitude is like this. Okay. The fourth one is has a break point at 10. Um, again, it starts at 0 dBs. And if this is 10, okay. Something like this. Ha, I'm sorry, this one must be this is my these are minus ones. Okay. These are in the denominators. When it's okay. in the numerator, it's upwards, when it's in the denominators, it's downwards. Okay. Hocam, uh, is there a possibility that the graph doesn't start from zero decibels? Uh, yes, for example, in the second case, it doesn't. It starts from infinite decibels, actually, for uh, again. Oh, okay. Okay? Okay. And for the first one, uh, it starts from 20 log 2, for example, as you see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then. For the first and second order system things, it starts from zero. And for the fifth one, it again starts at zero dBs. Uh, at 50, it has an asymptote like this. So let's say it's like this. So it's something like this. It goes down. So we are going to add them up, all these terms. Uh, well, let me uh, let me just copy uh, something. This is an example I took from a book, actually. So. Let me just copy it from here. Uh, the composite, I cannot, you know, plot it as good as we will have here. So I will just paste it. Okay, it will be something like this. How how is this going to be like this? Let me show you. First of all, we start from zero frequency, 
Well, of course, we cannot go to zero frequency because this is a logarithmic plot. We start from very low frequency. Let me also plot this. Um, let's say this is zero dBs or which is also equal to one. Okay. And the frequencies are uh, like you have to start from something low. 0 0.1, 1, uh, and let's say 100. This is omega. Okay. So, um, and this is zero. This is, let's say, 20, uh, 40, 60 dBs. Or in terms of gains, this is. For example, magnitude of 10 corresponds to 20 dBs, magnitude of 100 corresponds to 40, etc. It will start uh, with a line um, um, how would that be? Let's start with the first one and two. The first one is will be a line like this one, the standard. This is the first one. Okay. The second one is going to be uh, something, that if this is zero dBs, something like this. We are going to add them up, add them on, e on top of each other. Is the second one. The third one, where is the third one? Uh, what was it? Third one is this one. So it's at 0 0.5. Okay, let me use another color for that. So it goes up to, let's say this is 0 0.5, and then goes upwards. Okay. The fourth one, um, and this is the third one. The fourth one, let me move this color. It's up to here and then goes down. This is the fourth one. And the fifth one is, let me use this color. This is 50. It goes down also. This is the fifth one. Okay. We are going to simply add these up uh, to get the, the thing we have over here, actually. Um, so, what will happen is if, you know, the first two things added up is going to give you. Um, some, you know, let me just throw it here. So one plus two gives you the following. It starts from um, it's just a line like this. If this is, uh, let's say, zero dB is here. Um, and if this is one, and if this is two, uh, and we broke two. So at one, this is good. Yes. Okay. 
uh, the thing is, this thing has uh, it requires a lot of memory and cannot really move as easily. Okay, so it is a line when omega is equal to one. Uh, this becomes 20 log 2, okay? When the first two are added up. So one and two are added up. Uh, and as you see, uh, this first line, yes, this first line gets something like this. What else then? From then on, uh, we will add up the third one, fourth one, and fifth one to this line. Um, let me just make this a little bit larger. As you see, this is the first one and two added up together. Then the third one will start going up at 0 0.5. Okay, with a slope of uh, let's say plus one or 20 degrees. The other one is going down. This one is going up. So starting from at 0 0.5, this thing is going to have a level slope. That is, it's going to be, to have a constant slope, okay? Well, sorry, zero slope. Because this was going down, then this one is going up. So they cancel each other. So it, they just stop being, going somewhere at 0 0.5, uh, it stops there and stays there, as you see, stays level. Until you come to 10, where the support line starts going down with a slope of minus one, okay? So that your slope becomes minus one. And then your slope, well, after when you come to 50, you have another slope of minus one. So your slope becomes minus two. Could you understand this or is it, you know, do you have any questions? Hocam, uh, when we like combine two and one, like hmm. isn't it needs to be some linear graph then uh, some constant going like? Well, Actually, what you do is you combine a straight, you know, this line, you add that, you add a constant term to the second line. So the one and two basically is, will be something like this. Let me do it, or what, how can I do it? One and two will be, uh, it will just go up a little bit, this one. This is one and one plus two. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's not up to scale probably, but it, it will just move it a little bit upwards. This much, this much will be. Uh, this is not a good. Uh, so, is it like now, like let's say uh, two is equal to minus x, so it's the uh, graph of minus x and uh, the. Uh, let's say one is 20, now it's 20 minus x, so it's shift in the graph. Is it something like this? It is just going upwards, it's nothing, uh, you know, this is one and two added up, let's say. Okay, John. I don't understand what you have said actually. Yani şey açısından dedim de hocam ben görsel olarak düşünmüştüm. Hani iki linear şey olarak düşüyor. Sonra e, düz devam eder gibi. Constant bir de devam eder gibi düşünmüştüm grafiğin çiziminde. Yok. Ama matematiksel yani, olarak aslında. Bire bire ekliyoruz. Yani bir sabit bir kere mi ekliyoruz? Hep yukarı. Hep aynı frekansı şu kadar yukarıda olacak yani. Hani şu 2 log bilmem ne. 20 log 2 kadar yukarıda olacak. Anladım. Tamam, doğru. Then, uh, it's, as I have said, at 0 0.5, there is a thing going upwards. So, since 1 plus 2 was going down, 
the key one, the third one, levels it up so it becomes, and this has to start at zero, you know, one plus two plus three will be something like this. Let me just use it here. So the three one is here. At zero point five, it levels up to ten. Okay, so this will be one plus two plus three. And in 10, uh, it starts again going down until 50 with a slope of minus one. And then at the at 50, this will go with a slope of minus two or minus 40 degrees per decade. Okay. So this is the curve eventually. We get. If we plot the asymptotes, this is one asymptote. This is another one, another one. And finally. And then the real curve is uh, these are the what we are drawing. The red lines I have drawn here are the asymptotes. We just plot uh, individual terms on top, you know, close to those lines. They just uh, have well, they they reach those asymptotes as at the maximum values. Also, we have one more thing, the phase. Hmm. Let me copy that also from the book. Where is that? The first one has zero phase, okay? The first term, which was K. The second one, which is phi equals minus 90 degrees, uh, it was J omega. So you start from minus 90 degrees. Okay. Then you look at the individual phases. Uh, the third one starts at zero, goes to 90 degrees, uh, zero to 90 degrees. Okay. The fourth one goes uh, zero to minus 90 degrees. And the fifth one again goes to zero to minus 90 degrees. So you start with minus 90, um, go up because the third one goes upwards, okay? To zero degrees, minus 90 to zero, because you go 90 degrees upwards. Then you go 90 degrees downwards, this one, and then you go down one more 90 degrees. So these are the uh, very approximate uh, lines. 
And the actual line is going to be the addition of these, all these lines, as you see. Uh, Ujum, I have a question. Yes. Ujum, so is it possible to make this graph on uh, MATLAB directly? Because, I mean, we've got like yes, three, yes, we're combining so all, all, all of them together. Things, yes. Nowadays, we don't plot these things by hand, which is too difficult. But as I have said, you have to understand all these things. Uh, you know, even if you plot it in, in, in MATLAB, if you don't know what this means, uh, you won't do much with it, okay? You have to understand the basics even if you use MATLAB. That's the idea here. So let's try to do this actually with MATLAB. This example or, or Octave or whatever. Um, Uh, so let me share uh, the screen. So uh, okay. So two thousand. I'm writing the original thing. Um, okay, S times S plus ten, S plus fifty. So this will be S cubed. So one. Um, S squared term is going to be what? Sixty, I think. Then the S term is going to be five hundred and zero. Something like this. So this is the uh, the model, the transfer function of the system. We wrote it in terms of uh, the time constants in order to be able to border plot this, but we will do the border plot now. The border plot is quite easy, border of t gives you the border plot. Oh, we cannot see. We cannot see what? Graph. You don't see? Yes, oh. you are just sharing. Oh, I'm sharing. Okay. 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 What can I do about that? I'll just stop share. Share my screen, I guess. That's what. Oh. Okay. Now you see, right? Okay. Yes, Ujum. So let's have a look now. This is exactly as we have uh, in, in the plot. It starts from 40 dBs. Well, sorry, it starts from, uh, you know, infinite uh, magnitude actually, but then it comes to the minus two, it's something like this. Then, as you see, uh, the I cannot draw the asymptotes here, but uh, and I can't but it's here. Okay. Okay, so there is a 
region in which this thing is uh, zero point. This is zero point one, zero point two, zero point three. This is zero point five. Somewhere around here. And then we have here up to again 50. This is, and then you have another slope like uh, this. So here. The slope is minus 20, here is zero, here is minus 20, here is minus 40. And here, uh, as we have said, this goes up, goes like this, up to 10, goes down, goes down again. Okay, um, so we start from one term and then um, we start from the term on the left from the lowermost frequency and slowly go one by one to higher and higher frequencies in order to plot to plot. Well, well you, as I have said, you don't really plot these things by yourselves nowadays, but we have to uh, try to understand what's going on. Okay. Um, hmm. This is where I copied this thing from this book. There is another example with complex poles, for example, in the book, in this book. Um, okay. I was going to give another example, but we don't have that much time for that now. Do you have any questions about this? Uh, Evet. Biraz komik bir soru olacak belki ama bunu ne amaçlı kullandığımızı tam anlayamadım. Step response hani sistemin ne zaman steady state'e geleceğini falan gözlemlediğimiz bir yerde ama evet. burada şeyi tam anlayamadım. Ne için kullanabiliriz evet. bunu? Well, you are right actually. Well, at this point you are, it's very legitimate to ask this. <gülüyor> Because it looks like it's just unnecessarily complex thing and why we are using it. Uh, well, at this point, really, uh, let me tell you this much. Uh, the frequency response techniques, which I'm trying to introduce now in the, these last two weeks or three weeks of the class, is extremely important in the design of control systems. You know, uh, for the sake of simplicity, we start with uh, the time domain, things like the step response and so on. But in the actual design, what we really do is work with these things, okay? We are not, we don't really deal much with uh, time response and, uh, you know, time domain specifications and so on. Uh, the real control design is usually done in the frequency domain. Um, the stability of the system, the characteristics, the response, uh, how you shape the, is, they all depend on the frequency response and how you shape the frequency response using a controller. The controller basically, what it does is, it shifts, uh, changes the characteristics of the frequency response. And all these things are quite well defined in terms of the, uh, you know, the border diagrams and the frequency response characteristics of the systems. 
So I'm just introducing here the basics of the problem. Uh, and it's normal that you don't understand why we do this, but let me just tell you that this becomes very, very important as you go on working with controls. You see that this is very important, okay? If you have to take another course on control, you probably will understand, but probably not in this course, unfortunately. Thank you, John. Uh, okay. Any other questions? We don't have much time. You know, we cannot start another example here. So. Hocam ben size özel bir şey sormak istiyorum ama arkadaşlar çıktıktan sonra konuşsak olur mu? Olur, olur. Vaktiniz varsa çok teşekkür ederim. Hocam ben bir şey soracaktım ya. Ee, sınavlar okudunuz mu? Yoksa... Ee, devam ediyoruz. Yani bu hafta içinde herhalde yarın falan biter diye tahmin ediyorum. Tamam buyurun, sağ olun. Teşekkür ederim. Okay, let me stop this recording because...